What's going on guys? So we are in the VCC here at eTrailer. This is the Vehicle Consultation Center. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been getting that wrong all day. But yeah, if you guys didn't know, I'm out here at my official channel sponsor, eTrailer.com's worldwide global headquarters. This place is super cool. And they have this section here called the VCC. And this is kind of that old school. I want to walk in, get a part, be able to pay for it at a front counter, see a familiar face. You know, share a joke and a laugh with somebody who, you know, you used to talk to for years and years and years. This is kind of that place. It's really cool to, to still be able to do that, even though you guys are largely an online retailer where you sell stuff all over the country, right? Yep. Anyway, so I got, I got my, uh, my friend Jake here with me, and we thought a really interesting video, and this is one that I don't think you've probably ever seen before, and that is to show you how different fifth wheel hitches actually work. He's got a really cool, like, faux kingpin here. I don't even know where you get a faux kingpin, but he's got one. And uh, if anybody would have one, it would be e-trailer. Do you sell faux kingpins? I think we do. That's really weird. But they do. And we're going to go down the line here, and we're going to demonstrate how these work. And then we may even go over to the ball hitches over there and uh, demonstrate how some of those work. So this ought to be a fun video. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to make this kind of quick. I don't want to take too long to draw out a video on how to put, you know, kingpins and fifth wheel hitches, but we're going to see what we can do here. So the first one we're going to stop at is the Kurt A16. And Kurt now is actually a product of Lippert. Lippert bought Kurt. But um, whenever you see this designation down here, 16 stands for 16,000 pound capacity um, in terms of your towing capacity. It's just a style of fifth wheel hitch that's very common. And this one is one that actually goes into your puck system. Now this looks like a Ford puck system, just because of uh, how everything's spaced. A Ram puck system would be much wider than this one, but basically the only difference between this and what you might see on another brand of truck is the wing right here off the side. This center piece is all the same, they just have different mounting wings for the different types of installs, whether it's going to be installed in rails like this, or it's going to be installed in a puck system. Anyways, let's demonstrate how a kingpin would actually slide into the Kurt A1600. Spring-loaded. All right, so once it goes in, it's spring-loaded, it goes in, it pulls the jaws down. Now, how would you lock this in place to ensure that you're ready to go? We'd slide this pin into place and then lock it in. Okay, so now we're locked and coupled. There's no pulling mechanism on this one, right? So on some of these, you have to pull it out if you want to lock it or, or put it in place. But this one, just when it goes in, this arm comes forward like this, you're ready to pin it in place. And then to release it, let's go ahead and do that. This is going to be kind of interesting because it's going to turn this into a, uh, a little flying object. For this one, you just have to pull out far okay. enough to release it. So you do pull out and then push back. There you go. All right, so that's the key here. Now, if you lock this in or this goes in and this goes in, but this handle isn't fully seated, you won't be able to put this pin in and you're going to know that you need to make sure it's seated so you can lock it in place. Okay, now we're going to move to the Kurt. Q20, 20,000 pound rated fifth wheel hitch. This is a slider. So this one is actually on sliding arms. And if you have a short bed truck or if you have a, a truck that you need to be able to get that extra clearance, you'd basically pull the handle and this thing would slide forward and backward here so you can move it. And because of the stand we're on right here, these stands aren't exactly ideal for making adjustments to uh, the fifth wheel hitch. All right. All right, so this is a little different. Look at the handle design here. Look at the handle design here. All right, so walk us through this one. So you'd back up here. That one's in place now. And this has an interesting little locking mechanism right here. So instead of having a traditional pin that drops in place, you simply flip this up and when this sits flush right here, mm -hmm. it's locked, right? So that's where the pin would go through to hold this in place. But to unlock it, you flip that down. The jaws pop open. Now we're going to move to one of my favorite types of coupling. And this is a B&W. This is a Patriot. This is a slider, but it's going to be the same for a companion or anything else. This thing looks like it's a little easier to move forward and backward with the, uh, the locking mechanism for the sliding portion. What would you say you guys typically probably sell more of, the B&W or the Kurt? 
I think it's it's more the BMW just because of the name and um, people know they make a very robust and heavy built um, trailer hitch. Okay, let's try this one now. This one should be really easy. All right. So once that's in place, you simply pull the arm and you're gonna drop the pin in right there and you are secure. That's not gonna come out anymore. So that is very well secured. You can physically see it very easily as well. And if you look at this one, so these two kind of cross on top of each other. This one kind of does the same thing. This one, the two jaws just close around the front and it creates the full circle around your, your kingpin. And then that's all it takes to open it up. Very cool. I think a lot of people like the B&W product because of its simplicity. It just, Absolutely. you know exactly when you're in, you know exactly that if the handle's back, you're not locked. You pull the handle up, it's gonna close the jaw, pin it in place, and you're good to go. And this handle, being the length that it is, you can see how much closer to the side of the truck this gets you. Absolutely. You can, you can simply open your jaws up with one finger without having to fight against a spring mechanism. Yep, absolutely. And removing the head assembly is also really easy because the handles that you lift it up with are also the release handles to get it off of the, uh, the bushings right here, which is really nice. Okay, next is a Dempco Recon. This one's a little bit different. What's this one gonna look like? So this one will have a reinforced bar in front of it that slides across along with the 360 degrees of coverage. Would you say this is probably more complex? This is definitely a more complex design in the jaw system itself. Um, this is also going to be a solution for um, pairing a fifth wheel with any type of gooseneck. Okay. It clamps onto a gooseneck ball in this gotcha. shank here. Okay, and but to be fair, the other manufacturers also offer a very similar setup to yes. connecting to a goose ball. This is just what we're looking at here. Yep. I want to get your finger caught in there. So yeah, this completely encompasses the Kingpin, similar to the two Kurt products where they do completely wrap around it. But then you got this huge bar right here that also locks it in place. Now to unlock it or to go ahead and uncouple, you pull that bar like that. And then as you back out, this will open up and allow you to pull the Kingpin out. So it seems like it certainly is a, a bit, bit more of a, a process here you know it's cool it sounds super heavy duty it looks super reliable but it just seems seems a little complex it is it is and there's a lot of moving parts too you got to make sure all of your torsion bolts are tightened down to a t to the correct torque bedding or else it'll move a whole lot while you're driving yeah yeah so i like it i like it but the complexity of this is just a, a little bit more than i would want but you know, it is what it is. This right here is the airborne sidewinder. We actually looked at it on a, on, a, on a fifth wheel earlier, and this simply has a pivot point right here, which permits you to use a fifth wheel hitch in a short bed truck. Just keep in mind, it is gonna move your pivot point about two feet further back, so something you wanna keep an eye on. All right, next we have the Reese product. All right, here you go. All right, so this is another kind of an auto locking system. And by the way, on the BMW, it kind of auto locks as well. When you go back and you hit it, the arm will swing forward and the, the jaws will close, unless you go back super, super slow, so it doesn't do that. But yeah, it'll kind of auto lock like that as well. But the rest of these are spring loaded. So once you go back into it, the clamp is actually gonna go around it um, automatically with a heavy spring. Um, this one's kind of interesting because it doesn't actually surround the kingpin completely. Part of the plate right here acts as the right side portion of what holds the kingpin in place. So I don't know if you can see that right there. It's actually hollow right here, but the jaw up front, which appears to be about an inch thick, is what surrounds the kingpin. And uh, it feels like there could be a little bit more slop with this, just a little bit more motion with it. But Reese makes really great products. So, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's gonna make it any less of a quality product because Reese is known to make it incredibly high-end and uh, high-quality products like this. They've been making fifth wheel hitches forever. Okay, so down here, these are Pro Series, and these generally fall along a more budget line of fifth wheel hitches. You can usually get these for a little less. Doesn't mean they're gonna be you know, any less safe, but 
What you do have to keep in mind is that these do cost generally less because they aren't going to be quite as complex. And uh, typically they'll have, I guess, fewer convenience components to them. That's what we got going on in this one. All right, so we got the jaws open here. You can see that the thickness of the jaw material is a little thinner. Uh, the plate right here is a little thinner. But would you say that this is more of like the budget line? Yeah, fifth this, wheel is, hitches? this is more of a, an entry level if you're just wanting to get started. You're not exactly sure which style that you want. Um, these would be a great option to just get you out there camping. Great, and they go up to 20,000 pounds. Actually, I guess you just put that in and then you release it once you're in. So this is not going to be auto locking. And I guess, where would you pin this one in place? Okay, so you would drop this pin over like that, mm -hmm. and then you'd slap a pin in right there, and that would hold this whole thing in place. Yeah, so a very, very mechanical design. So yep. there's a lot that you're going to have to do yourself um, because you don't have those features at the higher end. Yeah, but in some cases, less than half the price. Yep. So it's a great way to get you into towing, while at the same time, you know, you're still dealing with a quality product. It's just made with maybe fewer materials, maybe a little lighter grade materials, but you know, you still get a 10 year warranty on it. So again, these aren't necessarily what I would consider to be a bad product. It would just kind of be your entry level into it. Or maybe you have the fifth wheel, you don't move it very often. You just need something that can get you by for now until you, you know, can get that super sweet BMW or Kurt or whatever other one you're looking at. Yep. Very cool. All right, so next video, we're gonna take a look at ball hitches. So, or ball mounts, shanks, I don't really know what you wanna call them, dropper hitches. But yeah, we're gonna go take a look at those over there in a second and uh, see what those are all about and how to manipulate those for the different trailer heights and things. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.